All right, everyone, welcome back to After the Storm in the NHL 2004 franchise mode series. On the last episode, we had games against the Montreal Canadiens and the Columbus Blue Jackets, both of which were wins. And then at the end of the Columbus game, technically on December 11th, we made a uh, pretty substantial trade. So we brought in Pascal Leclerc, who played really well against us a, um, in the Columbus game. And we brought in Espen Knudsen, who's one of my low-key favorite players from this era of games. He's a quick little guy. Um, and he, I believe it's like this game and then probably the next two games he's in. I'm pretty sure uh, that, or maybe I'm confusing him with somebody else. But uh, yeah, I think he's in the next two. And he, he ends up like a really quick, speedy player in like NHL 2005 as well. So of course you can see right here at the bottom, Vandermeer, Seidenberg, and Hackett to Columbus for Knudsen and Leclerc. So that marks our second trade of the mode. Uh, both pretty big deals for us. The first one, of course, being New and Dyke Leclerc in the second round pick for Francis, Brandon Moore, and Verbata. So that marked our second trade of the NHL 2004 franchise mode series. And if you can recall in 2003, if you watched it, we made I believe just one trade during that whole time. Uh, and that was for David Abouche went to the Pittsburgh Penguins in exchange for Morozov, Melikar, and Ference, I believe. So that's been probably the biggest story as well. We're starting to win some games. Unfortunately, we did have the hiccup a couple episodes ago with those Phoenix and Boston games that didn't actually uh, save when I had the crash. So unfortunately, we lost those games, but... As I mentioned in the last episode, we're just going to keep pushing through. I don't expect we're going to be making too many more trades. We have Potvin, who's playing unbelievable. Pascal Leclerc played so well against us in Columbus uh, that we're really excited to have him as backup, especially because Jeff Hackett just wasn't playing that well. And one more thing before we get going on the games for this episode. The big thing for us is... Another trade, I don't have any in mind right now, but I know the next trade, if there is one, is going to have to be something to improve the defense. Our defense is okay, but it's not uh, It's not a strong defensive core without their potentials being completely up. So uh, if another trade comes along during this season that we can look at, we'll probably be making it. But now let's get to the games, because this is probably one of the biggest episodes we've had so far, if not the biggest. The Atlantic Division, which is now way different, it's all the East Coast teams like Ottawa and Toronto and stuff. Right here, the New Jersey Devils are the division leader, and we have back-to-back -back games featured in this episode against them. And, provided Pittsburgh doesn't win any of their games... We could actually end up first in the division and third in the conference by the end of this episode. So we would jump all the way from 11th in the or in the conference in the East all the way up to third here where New Jersey sits. Of course, New Jersey is literally tied for eighth if they were not leading the Atlantic division. It feels very weird to say Atlantic. I want to say Metro so badly when I'm saying this, but... Yeah, we have the opportunity here to really make up some ground in our own division, and that's probably where our focus should be. For the Devils, though, looking at them, 10, 6, 7, and 3 on the season. So they're actually getting boosted quite a bit by their ties. I think that's probably the most end of any team. Yeah, 6 for the Islanders down at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure about any of the West Coast teams, but it... I would say that they're probably, yeah, they have the most ties of any team in the league right now. And if you know anything about the New Jersey Devils from this time, they are the reigning Stanley Cup champions. So this is a bit of a surprise because this is the year they win the cup. Actually, no, this is not the year they win the cup, is it? I think this is the year Tampa wins the cup. So they're coming off the cup win here against the Anaheim Ducks. But... Yeah, th this is a team that should be playing a lot better than they are. They should be probably first in the East and not trailing two other teams. But with that in mind, we're going to get going into the games. I'm going to just say one thing right off the hop is uh, I think I've already edited the lines as we saw in the last episode. Felix Podvin's playing both of these games because he's played so, so well in the recent ones. Jeff Hackett actually played the Montreal and Columbus games for us to allow Podvin to rest up. And in the two games here that we lost due to the sim and the crash... Podvan was actually, when we played them, he shut out both Phoenix and Boston on back-to-back -back nights. So we're going to trust him that he's the best option in net tonight. And I believe LeClaire is fatigued anyway. 
So we're going into these games with both. Both games will be Felix Botvan. All right, so we're here at the Continental Airlines Arena. Man, it hasn't been called that in a while. Prudential Center is the new building. I don't think they play in this one anymore at all. Oh, good stop. So like I said in the intro there, this is probably the two biggest games of the season so far. So I'm really excited to get these ones going. Uh, we made some changes to the lineup, I think. Is that Espinutsen right there? Yep, making his debut. Ever since I touched around with the player boost things, I've, ooh, as we go offside, I've been noticing a whole lot more that the AI is actually getting called on the hooking penalties that they previously weren't. Oh, that one almost leaked in through Berdur. No matter what, the goalies are always struggling with those numbers. Oh, that puck was just sitting right in front of Berdur. I couldn't find it. Oh, off the post. Oh, off the bench, Brendan Ward with a nice chance. Oronic, all oh, these hooks. Ooh, nice hit by Knuts in there. Man, Gagne, a speedster. And there's Espinutsen getting a f his first assist as a flyer. And we got the 1-0 lead. Actually, Weinrich had a, an assist on that too, and he's drawn back in the lineup since some of the early episodes. So that does it for the first. Uh, we definitely dominated play a little bit more than the Devils did. Uh, the For sure, the beginning of that period, Podvain had a few tests, but nothing major. Uh, we had the power play. We didn't generate anything on that one. But uh, the goal by Gagne, man, like ever since he's jumped up a couple overall points, his speed is just off the charts. He's getting around everybody. So it's really, really good to see. I think some of the effect is from the player boost thing, but that's making it more even of games more competitive that's for sure and that'll obviously go off as soon as our potential comes back but yeah good start to uh this two game segment against the uh devils oh lume gets tied up there going for that rebound oh the devils fans are booing them he's hit by Janssen there icing there we go. Still been a slow game. We're having a lot more chances than the Devils are. Ooh, Weinrich with the shot. Nice hit by Ragnarsson. Good stop by Podfan. So the end of the second, same score as the end of the first. It's been pretty quiet. Uh, I think, yeah, the Devils only had two shots that period. The Devils at this time were a team that played a lot of trap. They played a very low-scoring game. So we're kind of beating them at their own style of hockey right now. But uh, hopefully we can just keep keep this pace up and get out of here with the win. Oh, Monte got cranked. Oh, man. The other aspect of this game is it's been very physical so far as well. Lots of hits. Nice block. Oh, off the post. Great poke check there by Lume. Ooh, great stop by Broder there on Brandamore. Ooh, good stop by Potvin. Oh, what a move by Verbata. Oh, man, Broder was down and out, and Verbata had a great chance. What a block. Another block by Ragnarsson on this play. Breakaway. Yes. Dude, Ragnarsson on that play had two huge blocks set it, and then sets up uh, Recky with the outlet pass. And this team's starting to play. Another nice stop by Podvan there. Ooh, Desjardins off the bench. Man, Brandon Moore's out there and just tired. Penalty. <laughs> this game has been rough, man. Stop. Ooh, Ronick in front. That's going to do it for this one. 
<laughs> okay. Freezing coming in for an extra shot at the end. So a 2 nothing victory. Podvin gets the, one of those two shutouts back. And uh, that was a physical game, but we really did. We played a lot of tight defense. And that, that shift with the recce goal was was huge. Ragnarsson with that block at the end. Or the two blocks on the on the uh, shift and then the pass. And Gagne with the first star. Yeah, great game by us. We really stifled New Jersey defensively. All right, so we're out of the first game. And I'm going to go check the standings just to see if Pittsburgh won a game or anything like that. So Pittsburgh did win one of their games. They're up at 30 points as well. So we have the opportunity to jump ahead of them, even if the Rangers win. The division's so tight right now that uh, it makes it really tough to solidify in any of the positions. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna keep pushing through here. We're gonna play the second game. Pot fans still in the net. Uh, now we're at home against the Devils. All right, so game number two of the episode. Game number two against the Devils. We were considering conditioning an exact science in 2003. Mika Kiprasov was still hacking darts at this time. So Brodeur also back in the net for uh, the Devils. Oh, Janssen. He's hit by Ronick there. And we're back at home so that our potential has actually jumped up quite a bit. So we're seeing like Gagne and Amante have some of those badges. Or traits or whatever we call them. Yep, so there's the commentary actually acknowledging that the arena's full. I think that's partly due to the fact that I lowered ticket prices and we've been winning, so. Oh! Great chance there for Knudsen. Oh, Gagne. Good chance there. Slashing. They're not even going to show the replay of it? Okay. So that does it for the first 0-0 game. Just the Stevens penalty, but a very similar start to the game that we had in the first game against uh, the Devils. Just kind of quiet for the Devils. They didn't have much offense. Uh, they took a penalty, and we had lots and lots of chances. But 0-0 heading into the second. Oh. Colin White almost blocked that into his own net. Hit by Recky there. Let's play by Kappen in there. Oh my goodness, the speed. Kapanen and Gagne, as of late, have just been on fire. It's the speed. But that, that whole play starts with Kapanen coming back and doing that back check against Friesen off the bench too, which is very impressive. Another one nothing lead. Oh, Williams with a great chance. You pot van. Yeah, the arena is full. So that's going to do it for the second period. Coming out of it the same way we came out in the first game. And man, the Devils only managed two shots in that entire period. I think that's the same as the other game, too. So we're having a lot of similarities. But, man. Oh. Penalty shot? Wow, we're getting a penalty shot out of this. Thirteen goals for Amante already? Jesus, man. Guy just scores goals. Man, it's it's almost an identical game. Like so close. Oh, Ghani almost away there. Blocked. Oh, nice stop by Broder. Oh, that one almost bounced in from Recky too. Nice stop. Oh, the one timer missed on the other side too. Hit by the captain. Two line pass. Oh man, pot. Hit. 
<laughs> just launches it. So that'll do it. Back to back shutouts against the Devils. 2 nothing in both games. Podvian regains those two shutouts. I'm starting to think the goalie boost. I've got it up two notches on my side. I'm starting to think it's a little bit too much. So I might drop it back down. But man, we're playing good defense right now. That's for sure. I mean, he, sh he faced 27 shots in both games. Broder gets the first star and he lost. All right, whatever. All right, so coming out of that game, both big wins against the Devils. I'm, I'll am i take a look at the standings and see if we uh, jumped up anywhere. Pittsburgh's still sitting third in the division, so we're sitting in ninth. A point behind the Leafs in eighth. So uh, Pittsburgh, we're actually tied with Pittsburgh too. So um, we've played one more game than Pittsburgh, so that's why Pittsburgh has the, probably in wins as well. Um, that's why they've got that spot and third, but looking at the Atlantic, New Jersey's dropped to third in the division, man, this is a three point spread for every team in this, uh, this division right now. So, but it's pretty good to see we're getting there. We're just a point out of the playoffs and, uh, we're, well, I mean, we're only a point out or we're tied for our division lead. So. Uh, hopefully we can keep this up. Like I said at the end of the, the game there against the Devils, I think I'm going to change the goalie boost sliders because I think Podfan's just been playing ridiculously well. So he's probably being boosted up a little bit too much. So I'm going to drop it down to one. Hopefully it makes more of a difference. I figure that with the player boost and the defense we're playing will probably result in a goal, maybe two every game, but it'll be more representative of hockey. So the next episode, episode number 15, will feature Calgary and Tampa. So the actual 2004 Stanley Cup final matchup. Both games at home, which is good because we'll have our boosted attributes of our home team right now, uh, which has just been awesome for us. We're playing very well at home now. So that's really good to see. But what we'll do, we'll jump into the standings and just go preview Calgary and Tampa. So first, Tampa Bay sitting at... Man, they've only played 27 games. They've probably played the least amount in the league, but they're 18-3-5-1. They are killing it right now. They're a point out of first in the league. They've only scored 69 goals, but have 50 against, which is likely, eh, yep, yeah, probably the best in the league. So they're getting some incredible goaltending from uh, Nikolai Habibulin right now. I mean, Detroit sitting second. They have 93 goals in this season already, so that's crazy to see and tampa's been really good at home really good on the road pretty good everywhere calgary on the other end they're at the complete bottom of the league 10 13 3 and 2 on the year 25 points they have a seven point spread and on nashville of course um but yeah they're not uh they're not scoring much at this point so that's probably the, their main their main weakness but man yep we are shooting up the standings. It's really good to see, and uh, hopefully we can just keep up this momentum. I haven't taken a look at player stats in a while. I wonder where, where some of the... Shanahan still leading the league, 44 points. He's in a three-way tie with Kovalchuk and Heatley. Holy crap, Heatley and Kovalchuk. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They must just be killing it, man. Brett Hall up there with Shanahan as well. Sundin seems like he's just pulling. Oh, and McGillney, I guess. Glenn Murray always has, like, way too many points in this game. Got all the guys, like, way over a point per game pays. So Hashik leading the league with 16 wins. He's in a three-way tie with Kolzig and Happy Bullen, so the top three teams in the league, of course. Um, let's see, where does Podfan rank? Because he's probably getting close here he's got eight wins in 21 games played which doesn't look good but then you take a look at his numbers and i think he's probably got the best goals again so we gotta do all this scrolling here but so he actually doesn't but he's one of the top goaltenders for sure a 169 for happy Bullen is crazy a 171 for kolzig is crazy and then uh pot fan sitting here at a 173 but what are 908, 909, and then he has a 928. So 
Podvan is in the running for sure for the Vesna Trophy this season. I wanted to go just look at our team and our points. As you can tell, that, that start really stifled a lot of point totals for a lot of guys. Like, Recky having 9 points in 30 games is crazy. A lot of guys are just low, but we've been having a lot of these games that are just low scoring the whole way through. So, we had Amante with 13 goals. Crazy. So I will say this, even after coming off two shutouts, I think we're going to put Leclerc, and I'm actually going to do it right now. So Leclerc is going to get his first start as a Philadelphia Flyer in the first game of the next episode against the Calgary Flames. Figure it is best to hopefully, like, I think it, if you're looking at this four-game stretch, as you guys can see on the screen there, um, I believe I'm going to use... I'm going to use Leclerc in the Calgary and the Islanders games because Atlanta's been so good and Tampa's been so good. I definitely want Felix Podfan to be in the net for both of those games. So we came off probably the two most important games of the season, but we're heading into a real important one against Tampa Bay, one of the top teams in the league, a prove-yourself game. We had a lot of those earlier in the season, and they all turned out horrible. So with that said, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, click like down below. Subscribe to the channel. There's so much more stuff coming, I think. Uh, I'm not sure if I've talked about it yet. NHL 21 still set to release. When it does, I believe this will be three times a week. The NHL 2004 uh, series will have three episodes per week, preferably on a Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then on the Tuesday and Thursday, there will be NHL 21. One episode likely for Be A Pro and the other one will be for franchise mode. I have no idea who I want to do the franchise mode with as of yet, but it'll be done in the exact same way as this. I'm going to play all the games, record them, and then upload them onto YouTube for you guys. Um, and then, yeah, pretty much the weekend, the time when there won't be anything going on. Um, and then once hockey season starts up too, there's going to be Carolina stuff, actually game reviews and trade stuff mixed in there as well. So there's going to be lots coming to the channel. So definitely hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you guys can get it as soon as it's up on YouTube. You guys can get a notification to your phone, to your computer, to wherever you watch YouTube. You'll get it immediately as soon as it comes out. Thank you again for watching, guys. I appreciate all the support. I will see you on the next episode.